can name five of them in a row and show you I didn't I didn't invest in certain things because I didn't feel it was right. I'm going to give you a couple examples, and there's an important point to it. You think that I'm doing this show because I'm making something off it. Well, I'm making a good living as a talk show host, but I'm not making the kind of money I could make if I were a salesman. I mean, if I wanted to sell a hedge fund, for example, what if I wanted to work with a hedge fund and I wanted to make, I don't know, $500 million a year more than that? Could I make $500 million a year? Sure, if I owned the company, I could make that. I could have worked with some big Wall Street people. I didn't, but I'll go back in time. Uh, but before I do, it's to tell you for another reason. The reason is this, is that I actually believe what I say. And one of the reasons I get up every morning is because I want to do what I can to save this country from the tailspin it's in. I'd like a new pilot to pull Obama out of the pilot's chair before we hit the ground and pull us up out of the nosedive before it's too late. And I think Donald Trump is the big man who can get in there and pull Obama's hands off the wheel before he crashes the plane forever. You know, I was watching a movie last night called Child 44. I'm not going to give you the whole plot. It was done. It's about the Soviet Union after World War II. And it's about child murders, the rapes of young boys in particular. And how a police guy is trying to find the killer of these young boys. Someone's raping them and killing them. And he's told by his higher-ups in the Soviet Union that they cannot report that the children are being killed by a murderer because Joseph Stalin had an edict that homicide can only occur in a capitalist nation. It could not occur in the paradise of the Soviet Union. I, I listen to what I just said to you. And the whole plot is about the mind control of a left-wing totalitarian society. A road that we are long down. If you look at the evil people in the media who try to control your thoughts, who never report what a perp looks like unless it meets the protocols of the controllers of the media. If you look at your government, when last week a devout Muslim shot a policeman many times and the mayor of Philadelphia got up and said, he's not a Muslim, it has nothing to do with Islam. This is after the chief of homicide detectives said the man did it in the name of Islam. He did it for ISIS. We are on the road, not to perdition, but to actual death. I have studied the devolution of societies. And I am telling you under liberalism, we have gone a long way towards absolute and total fascism. And that's why... I don't sell mutual funds. I'll be back. It is 25 minutes after the hour you're listening to the Savage Nation. My good friend Joseph Farah, who runs World Net Daily, with whom I partner for michaelsavage.com, and I've known Joseph for a long time, tried to get through. I didn't give him the back phone number. I didn't even know he was calling, but he would have asked Donald Trump the following questions. What are you going to do to make America great again? Would you keep borrowing money to run the government, or would you announce the day you take office, no more borrowing, start planning the cuts? He then said you had a terrible hit piece done on you by Esquire magazine. Will you take the advice of my friend Joseph Farah and by Esquire, and maybe other problematic <laughs> media outlets. It's a very funny question. He ought to buy the New York Times. <laughs> That's what he ought to do. <laughs> All right. The phone number is 855-407-282. If you missed the Donald Trump interview, it is now up on michaelsavage.com any moment anyway for your listening uh, a pleasure. We're also talking about the madness of Sean Penn and the interview that led to the capture of the world's most notorious drug kingpin and i think it's a very important story because no one does a thing like this unless they're crazy or they know something we don't know i mean let, let's say he didn't mean to see the guy get captured he could say that but it doesn't matter what he meant to do all we know is that he was tracked the drug dealer was the drug kingpin rather was tracked through sean penn and the actress that's all that matters that's how they see it and so he's put himself and his family in grave danger. Not only that, as I said, New York State, uh, New, New uh, U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara is leading a federal probe over Penn's ties. 
the Mexican government is looking at him? What is he trying to achieve here? Is he that desperate for attention that he would put himself at risk like this? This is an example of when I say to you, uh, liberalism is a mental disorder. There's no greater example than this. This is a, a story that's worth talking about. But we can also talk about Trump, and I didn't get to, to the other stuff I want to talk I have so many things I want to do at once. They're all getting in my way, to be honest with you. But, you know, there's only so much you can do at any one minute on a, on a, on a show. And I don't know which one that you want me to talk about. So if you want to drive the show, we've got one open line at 855-400-728. Let's go right here in San Francisco. Garrett, KSFO, go ahead, please. What's your concern? Yes, I'm a Trump supporter, and I have one major reservation that a lot of other true conservatives might have, and that's that uh, Trump, aside from being um, a friend of the Clintons in the past, has some very liberal policies in the past or liberal viewpoints, especially on health care and other things. I'm wondering how concerned uh, real conservatives should be about that. Well, you know, you keep using a loaded phrase of real conservatives as though you spoke to the Pope of conservatism, who determines what it, what is a real conservative. Well, to me, I'm, I don't believe the Republican Party is conservative anymore. Well, we know that's a given, but what's a real conservative? What's the litmus test? Well, I, I guess one issue would be the issue of health care. I, I don't believe that uh, conservatives generally would support something like a single-payer health care system. Okay, here's what it comes down to. Borders, language, culture. He passes my litmus test. That's all. If you want to go listen to the Pope of uh, conservatism, go ahead. Because you wind up with nothing. You'll have two Dixie cups and a string. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Listen, if you do win tonight, remember that no one cares about that award as much as you do, okay? <laughs> Don't get emotional. It's embarrassing, okay? That award is, no offense, worthless. It's a bit of metal that some nice old confused journalists wanted to give you in person so they could meet you and have a selfie with you. Okay? That's all it is. He's about right about that. I guess Sean Penn doesn't recognize that, but uh, here we are. So we could talk about more serious things than Hollywood. Uh, as you know, many of them are very nice people, but naive, as the word naive is, you cannot believe it. You know, you have to understand, I have no anger or hatred for them. Yes, the studio heads are the bad ones, the ones who choose to make the anti-American, anti-family, anti-church, anti-everything you believe in movies. But the people in the film industry are generally naive people. They went to acting school. Some of them did go to college where they were brainwashed. Many, very few of them actually escaped the brainwashing. And they come out as perfect Soviet citizens. The Soviet world of Beverly, of, of Hollywood, the Hollywood Soviet system. They're perfect government actors and actresses. And I want to get back to a movie I, I talked about last night. I saw last night called, I think, Child 44. Again, it starts in World War II where a kid is found in the forest by a group of uh, Russian soldiers. They adopt him. They give him a nickname, Leo, I think. He grows up and becomes a Soviet soldier where he distinguishes himself fighting in some of the worst battles of World War II, including the taking of Berlin. And people are killed all around him. And then after the war, he establishes himself within the Soviet system and becomes uh, uh, an important policeman in the government. And then they find dead children on the railroad tracks who are being raped. Boys are being raped by a, by a predatory homosexual rapist. And the fact is, is that when he tries to investigate the killers... He's told by his superior he cannot do it because, according to Joseph Stalin, homicide is not possible in paradise. It is only possible in a capitalist nation. Now, why am I telling you the story? Because it's what we're living through right now. We're living through a time where you're told what to think despite what you actually see going on. So last week, for example, and Robert, get the sound ready. A homicide detective comes out after a cop is shot in Philly and says one thing. And then the mayor of Philadelphia comes out like the good Soviet citizen he is and says quite another. This is exactly what went on in the Soviet Union. Robert, play the homicide detective first, please, from Philadelphia. 
And we had the suspect upstairs, the homicide unit, talk to him. Uh, right away, he didn't have anything to say. But then he stated that he pledges his allegiance to Islamic State. He follows Allah, and that is the reason he was called upon to do this. All right, that's a, hold, hold it. That's a homicide detective about the shooter of a cop, walked up to the police car, and shot, shot through the window. Luckily, the cops survived that many shots. Now comes the mayor out of the Soviet... Uh, the, the left-wing Soviet system that's emerged in America under Nancy Pelosi's gavel. Listen. In no way, shape, or form does anyone in this room believe that Islam or the teaching of Islam has anything to do with what you've seen on that screen. That is abhorrent. It's, it's just it's terrible, and it does not represent the religion in any way, shape, or form or any of its teachings. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is a criminal uh, with, a, with a stolen gun who tried to kill one of our officers. It has nothing to do with being a Muslim or following the Islamic faith. Now, after the illegal alien in San Francisco shot Kate Steinle with a gun that was found, apparently uh, from a federal agent who lost it. I don't know why the federal agent hasn't been in prison for losing her gun, for example. But, okay, we'll put that aside. Losing a gun, you're a federal agent and your gun is stolen? To me, you go to jail for that if I ran things. You're that sloppy and you're a federal agent? Anyway, you're not allowed to say he was an illegal alien in the Soviet city of San Francisco under Commissar uh, Pelosi. Commissar Pelosi said immigration, immigrants have nothing to do with crime. Commissar Pelosi and the little men in the press here in San Francisco and the media, the little tiny men, the Lilliputians in the San Francisco media, the Lilliputians said that he was not even an immigrant. It was by accident. He was shooting seals, harbor seals, and the accidentally the gun went off. This is again what went on in the Soviet Union. So if you think that it's fiction for me to tell you that we are already on the road to a Soviet America, you wouldn't understand history. And that's why I support Trump, number one, because I think if anyone could turn it around, it's him. And that's if anyone could turn it around. It's a big if. And number two, it's why I get up in the morning and do my show. I believe we all have to speak out. I believe we all have to take risks. I believe we all have to risk our jobs, our careers, we have to talk out wherever we are against this creeping psychosis of the Soviet system that we're living in. Truthfully, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And uh, without going into details, maybe I'll give you a little outline. When I said to you, you know with my salesmanship what I could be doing if I wanted to just make money. If I just wanted to make money, I would have done so a long time ago. I'll give you a few examples. I'll go back as far as I can. Let me think carefully. When I was in the Fiji Islands collecting medicinal plants at great cost to my young family on my own money because I couldn't get anyone to fund ethnobotany at the time, I had opportunities to import various things and make a fortune. Take a look at Fiji water. Where do you think it comes from? Ginger. I was approached to import ginger from Fiji and become a broker of Fiji and ginger. I'm giving you an example. I didn't want to do it because I was there doing something I thought was more important. When I visited Israel many, many years ago, it's over 20 years now, I had the opportunity to buy real estate in a town up in the Golan, near the Golan called Sfat. The artists lived there. The religious lived there. I houses were for twelve or $15,000. They were gorgeous. And I was told that this area was going to boom. I said, you know, you're right. And I went home and thought about it. I said, I don't really want to capitalize on the Holy Land. Maybe I'm a fool. Once you know, I was in Hawaii as a young graduate student. And I was walking in a creek looking for a certain plant. And I came upon a petroglyph in the water. I picked it up in the clear streams and I looked at it. I knew what a petroglyph was and I knew it was part of the traditions, the heritage rather, the heritage of Hawaii. I placed the petroglyph right back in the water where I found it. What I'm trying to say to you is that there's different types of people on the earth. And it doesn't mean that you're bad if you want to make a lot of money. But it doesn't mean that you're stupid if you don't. Do you get what I'm saying to you? It's very important you understand that. And then it's very easy in the cynical age to believe everyone who you listen to, who is a public figure as I am, is fooling you in some way. Many of you are cynics and you don't trust anyone or anything. I get it. You think everyone's a phony. You think everyone's doing something wrong. You think everyone's this, everyone's that. You're one of the PJ media that sit out there, put everyone down. You go on everyone's Facebook page and try to put them down. You try to call radio shows and uh, knock people. But you're wrong. There are people who believe in what they're saying. There are people who know what's going on. There are people who are trying 
to save the sinking ship. End the story. 